everyone. I am here at a Bible study. Okay, does anybody remember what book we're going to be in tonight? We are going to be in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. Okay. And the verses you guys are supposed to be practicing. Does anybody know what Philippians 4.13 means? What does it say, I mean? Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And Hebrews 13.8, Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then Proverbs 17.17 17 says, A friend loves at all times. Okay, so I'll put that there. Thing popped up. I was trying to see what it said. So what we'll do is, um, I'm going to read to you right now, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. This will go along with the devotion. There are friends who destroy each other. And that is so true. Family too. Sisters, brothers. But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. A good friend is hard to find and not easy to come by. Treasure that relationship when you get it. All right, so now we're going to read Proverbs chapter 18. If you want to follow along um, in your Bible with me, I'm in the New International Version. Okay. An unfriendly man pursues selfish ends. He defies all sound judgment. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the innocent of justice. A fool's lips bring him strife and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his undoing and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it an unscalable wall. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honor. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. A man's spirit sustains him in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. Oh, so true. I can't tell you how true that is. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge. The ears of the wise seek it out. A gift opens the way for the giver and ushers him into the presence of the great. The first to present his case seems right till another comes forward and questions him. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. An offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city. Yep. And disputes are like a barred gate of a citadel. From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest from his lips, he is satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. A poor man pleads for mercy but a rich man answers harshly. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen. And that was all of 
Proverbs chapter 18. A lot of Proverbs there. A lot of good Proverbs. So true. Okay. Broken heart, who can bear? I understand that more than anybody will ever know. And it's been a really hard last week. So many bad things has happened and my stepmom died. I busted my lip open. I fell and cut my toe really bad. My toenail. Then Sherm got sick, sicker in a, in a severe pain and had to be taken to the hospital in the ambulance. He's still sick, hurting bad. He's still, he's got problems going on with his urine and not being able to pee. And it's like orange, like it don't look right at all. They sent that off for, a, they sent that off today to be tested. So he went to the doctor today and he has to go back again on Thursday. I could even think with my head what else happened else, but it's just been a crazy last week. Okay. I just cried and cried so much. I don't think I could cry anymore, especially the last two days. The littlest things just set me off, you know. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's been very, very emotional for some reason. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the devotion that goes along with the Bible study. And this one is by Susanna Foth Ottman. I have three college friends that I group text every morning. We tell each other the crazy things our kids do. We laugh. We share what struggles we are facing. We pray for each other's families, and we send inspirational scripture. This last year has been a rough year for me. It's been a season where life has been difficult and Jesus seemed far away. But my friends have been reminding me of the great love that Jesus has for me. In spite of crazy circumstances and the uncertainty I am feeling, these friends tell me the truth. The other morning I had an epiphany while I was doing my devotions. I realized that while I may feel far from Jesus, he is near. He has always been. My feelings can change moment by moment, but Jesus is steadfast, and he has used my friends to show me this. They speak his words into my life. They listen to me. They encourage me to keep going. They celebrate with me. They cry with me. Whatever season I am going through, good, bad, or ugly, they stick with me. They are true friends, and they always point me back to the truest friend of all, the one who never leaves me or forsakes me, the one who brings light into my darkness, the one who offered his life for mine and yours. We may not always feel that Jesus is close to us, but he is. His love surrounds us and draws us near. He hymns us in on every side, and we can call him friend. And I call him best friend. All right, guys. One more time, let's go over um, the verses that we're supposed to be practicing. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. In Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. All things through Jesus. Okay, I did, um, my aunt drove by today and dropped some stuff off and she did have one magazine that I needed for the Circle of Kindness, so we have one for today. I had a paperclip on my file. 
don't know what happened to it. Where'd that go? Oh well. I don't got no more to put in it right now anyway. Okay. So let me read these. We got three. There's, there's always three of them. So the first one is by Janelle Darney from Alabama. She says, Thank God for good people and random acts of kindness. Recently, my husband and I attended my mother-in-law's funeral in Ohio. Not only was it a sad occasion, but an expense we really could not afford. On our last night, we had dinner in a Mexican restaurant. We waited for the waitress to bring our check, but it never came. Turned out the man in the next booth had paid for our dinner without knowing about our financial situation. We thanked the man, and all he asked in return was to pay it forward with a good tip for the waitress, which we did. Thank God for good people and random acts of kindness. Ain't that nice? And this one is by Heather Erickson from Florida. Her generosity was so sweet and unexpected. I had missed my flight by one minute, so my day was not off to a good start. When I lost my cell phone charger in the waiting area, I panicked. A stranger asked if she could help me. When I told her about my charger, she suggested I buy a new one in the store in the lobby, but I explained that I had just gone over my budget to buy my lunch. A few minutes later, the girl handed me a brand new charger. I was shocked and told her I couldn't accept it because I had no way of repaying her. She said, no need, just pass it on. Her generosity was so sweet and unexpected. And the last one. See, I'm going to start crying just reading these. This one is by Karen Marsh from Illinois. It warmed my heart to help a couple in need. Last week, I stopped in Walmart. I had a few minutes, so I started bringing in the carts left around the lot. An older gentleman asked if I worked there. I told him I was just lending a hand and asked if he needed anything. He stated that he was 97 and his wife was 94 and she had misplaced her cane. After searching around the store for a few minutes, I ran to the customer service counter and asked if it had been turned in. It had. The couple was ecstatic. It warmed my heart to help them. That was really nice. <laughs> really nice person. She just stops by the store and starts helping them bring carts in and stuff. I used to do, that was one of my jobs when I worked at Big Lots. I don't know if it was called Big Lots or Odd Lots back then. Anyway, it's a department store. And um, one of my jobs was I would stock the aisles and all that. And usually in that, I did the makeup and stuff like that, but they, I could go anywhere in there, and um, getting the carts, and it was late, always late at night when I got off, and that's when the movie theater was beside of it, and there was always tons of people out there. I hated doing that when those people were out there, but that was part of the job, so I did it, but I didn't mind getting the carts. It was just all the people that was standing out there, you know, waiting for the movie theater, a bunch of teenagers and stuff. That's when my nerves were, they're still bad, but it was horrible back then before I got on medicine for that. Okay, so the next Bible or study, the next Bible study will be in the book of Romans, Romans chapter eight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night and I want to say God bless you all and good night, everyone.